Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today for the Horizon 5 for some more multiplayer racing. Now, for this session, we are going uh, racing with some A-class cars from the 1960s. Now, the rule was they were allowed engine swaps, which I have got in this, but they were not allowed driveline swaps. So everything here will be rear-wheel drive, I think. I don't think anyone's braved any of the front-wheel drives. So <laughs> got a lot of rear-wheel drive cars that are all pretty damn light, with a couple of American exceptions, um, and all have an awful lot of power going through varying size of rear tyres. And it's, yeah going to be sketchy. It also might be one of the most expensive grids ever assembled. Things like 2000 GT, I'm in a 250 GTO, there's a GT40, there's 427 Cobra, lightweight E-Type, couple of Emery's. God, I wouldn't even want to begin to calculate how much this grid would actually be worth if they went racing. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, we are off, we are underway, and I have been as mean as I possibly can for this first race. This is about as tougher a circuit as well. I say that, of course, this race, this series of races, is going to go on to dirt as well. Because, you know, why not make life really difficult for these cars by having them head off-road? Now, you could sacrifice your off-road performance and go for an all-tarmac car. That is a way to go. Uh, I don't know if anybody will have done. The, now, the Emery's, the Emery's are very strong in general. They might be really good off-road because they've got rear engines. The rest of us... Most of us will have engines hanging out the front, uh, so it could be that those Porsches are going to be the ones to beat, although they will have very sort of smaller tyres relative to some of the other cars, and they are very light, which is not always so helpful. Might get thrown around on the bumps. Uh, we have not had a terrible start. We've got a Jag in front of us, uh, which is going to have a go getting past the Porsche. We will follow the Jag through there. Both ran wide and got into trouble. Uh, coming through that corner. It's a GT40 leading the way at the moment from an XJ13. Don't know what tyres they are on, of course. The GT40 might not be on off-road race tyres, because that starts right at the top of A-Class, and I don't know what the XJ13 will be running. Uh, I think it. Will, I think most will be, mostly for the PI as well, well because you need to save some PI with some of these cars. Um, yeah, uh, who knows? Who knows in all of this. Uh, the XJ13 is to the front of the pack. Oh, the E-Type clonks a lamppost. That will put me alongside, but this is a difficult place to get a pass. That would normally be flat, but neither of us have really got the grip, and we're both on funky lines. I am not going to be able to have a look there. The, oh, GT40's hit a post. Uh, unfortunately, the post also slowed me down in that one. It has, well, we're back to fighting for third, only this time <laughs> with a different car. We will cross over the Porsche and take third place back again. Right, let's go and chase down the... I really appreciate not being crashed into every braking zone. I do appreciate the Porsche has got some pretty good brakes. Uh, we are not bad under braking, but we're not quite as good as the Emery. Uh, we are now a little bit further away. I think we might have a little bit more speed than the Jag, if I'm honest. I think we're a little bit more composed than the E-Type, and the E-Type slid out of there. Not quite going to do it. Uh, we almost, almost, I just couldn't pull my car all the way across to the inside. The E-Type's having a slide about. Oh, we kind of put the nose there a little bit. I think we slightly spooked the Jag, because we can get the car turned in underneath it. In the end, I don't think we were actually going to quite get the pass done, but the Jag just didn't quite have the grip. Oh, and then I've locked up in the final corner. We've immediately, all that hard work, and we've immediately gone and given it back. Because I locked the brakes, and we just went straight into the final corner. Well, that's not so good. No one's catching the Jag at the front of this. Uh, we are under pressure from behind, and I'm worried about the GT40. I think that thing's quick uh, around here. We are going to slide about through this section. We're closer, but I'm not so great under brakes. There's a little gap to the inside. The Jag's sliding. We get a slide, but it's not as big. We will make the pass stick on that E-Type, and I have done exactly the same thing again, immediately celebrated by locking up into the next corner. Uh, thankfully, the GT40 was battling with that lightweight E-Type, uh, and we will move ourselves up into a second place. Uh, now the GT40 is all over the back of us. We will have to defend if we can. Uh, no, we're not going to have an answer for that. <laughs> oh, I mean, like sometimes there are cars that there's just there's no chance of beating it. It's almost pointless fighting it. Whoa! I mean, I think we're closer to that 
than some of the others. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, there's no point in fighting that guy. It's just got, it's got more grip than I do, and it's got more speed than I do. So, yeah, we're just not going to really bother. Because uh, there's, only, there's only so much that we can do. Focus on making sure that the uh, E-Type is not able to find a way back past. I mean, pick up the pieces if the GT40 makes a mistake. It's run wide there. Uh, so we will try our best on oh, the E-Types run wide. Uh, we've got we've got some good top end in this uh, 250. Uh, right. Oh, that Ford has just got more grip than I do. It's Ford versus Ferrari, not the usual pairing. Oh, that's turned into suit. Now I'll get street furniture. Uh, well, thankfully, the Ford took the one out on the outside there. And it has run a little bit deep. Can we do anything to find a way past? The answer is going to be a no on that, although the Ford has also made an error under braking, exactly the same error that I did. I think in the faster speed stuff, I can match that car. It's just in the twisty bits, it's got a little bit too much grip for me, a little bit too much turn in. I can carry a bit more mid-corner speed than we can, although it's wide down here as well. Don't think I wanted first through there. Got a bit excitable with the rear end of the car. And it's not completely vanished away, and it's definitely a handful to drive that. My car is much calmer uh, to drive. I should have maybe gone for second on the climb up the hill. Um, but yeah, not quite going to be close enough. Barring a sketchy moment for that, uh, that GT40, don't think there's going to be much that I can do with my Ferrari. A third place is not too shabby, though. I will uh, gladly take that one, you know, all things considered. But we are not quite a match, certainly not a match for the Jag at the front. Not a match for the Ford in the end. Maybe higher speed stuff would have been a forte. Uh, however, yeah. I mean, this was always going to be one of the toughest tracks for these kind of cars. This was always going to be the sort of track where they would be difficult, where they would struggle. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we did all that we could. It just wasn't really quite enough. The big gaggle of cars crossed the line there. Uh, was that over seventh place, I think, between one of the Emery's, the Charger, <laughs> and XJ13? Uh, crossed the line. Yeah, very, very close together. Ah, well, there we have it. First race is in the back. We're on the podium. I mean, that's... That's something, you know, it's always, it's a solid start. It's a solid start if we can we can stick the car on the podium. Uh, we shall move on from here. Well, we are off <laughs> to a scrambler circuit next. God knows what we are going to see here. I've, I'm expecting the Emery's to be fairly fast. Uh, although, as we've seen, everyone is in a fairly similar boat for this one. It's going to be slidey. I think maybe the control, the composure I get in the 250 GTO may well work in its favour here uh, a little bit. We might be quicker than the likes of the GT40, but we will have to wait and see, really. It might be complete garbage going off-road this one. I have no idea what the GT40 does have a mid-engine uh, layout, which is good. But yeah, I'm definitely worried about the MREs. They're likely to get a lot of traction, or good traction. Would be the would be the guesswork. I mean, I've got pretty decent sized tyres on this. They're not going to be as big as the GT40s. Uh, I would not have imagined. Uh, oh, we should be. Well, we are probably lighter than the GT40, but I don't know whether I want to really be that uh, here. It might be a little bit too uh, bumpy for a super light car. So I did not intend to go for a dive at all there. That was <laughs> just we were just uh, yeah. That was where I was going to be breaking for that corner. Didn't realise I was going to get away with being that much later on the brakes than everyone else. Now, the Camaro, so the Camaro is heavy. It has a lot of power, about 900 horsepower, but it does weigh a lot more. We'll have some big tyres on that car, which is good for traction. And it can also defend by going sideways and filling the road. That is another way to do it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, we had a, a very, very long time ago. Um, we had, I think it's Mr. Arrowhead here, a YouTube, YouTube drifter, uh, who did, went very sideways down the Bathurst mountain and made it difficult for cars to pass. Uh, I still, I still remember that. I can't remember, was it Motorsport 5? I think he ended up doing that, it's quite funny. Um, yeah, it's difficult to pass a car that's sideways across the track, funnily enough. The Camaro made it awkward, but, uh, we were able to find a way past the I tell you what, the Ferrari is really good on the dirt. Weirdly, the 250 GTO, you know, that classic race car, 
is very, very good on the dirt. It has a lot of grip out here. Probably the best the front engine cars, that's for sure. Uh, although we've got an E-Type that is coming to uh, investigate. I think it's just the level of composure this car has, considering what I'm asking it to do, it is remarkable how good this thing is on the dirt. I mean, I don't think it's going to be quicker than the Jag around here, but it is on, on the dirt itself, we're not actually that far down. We lose a little bit on the tarmac, but uh, yeah, out, out on the dirt, it is incredibly, incredibly good. But that is a pleasant surprise. I mean, I thought it was likely to be a strong car, let's face it. When you've got only 600 horsepower, weigh about 2,300 pounds on big off-road race tyres, that's pretty good going for A-Class. Although, so is just about everything else here uh, around those sort of figures. Um, we are by no means the most powerful car here. Uh, even if we ignore the Camaro for a minute, a lot of cars are running five, 600 horsepower. So, yeah. Uh, I think we might be better on the dirt, potentially, than the Jag. I just, I think it's too quick on the tarmac for me to be able to catch it. Certainly not streaked away here like it did at the first race. Uh, and we have closed in a smidge. Oh, we're going to go very sideways there, uh, which is not what we needed. And yeah, we close in on the dirt and then we lose all of that ground gained once we get into this section. I don't actually know this track all too well. That's going to be a drift tap on the wall. Don't mind me. Uh, don't, don't really know what I can, can and can't get away with in the Ferrari with the howl of the... It's a 3.5 litre V8, which is from... I'm not sure what. 3.55, 3, maybe? I don't, I don't actually know where the engine in this is from. Uh, what I know is... Oh, the car is definitely rapid with it in, uh, although we are, uh, well, maybe Eccentric was just toying with us, because now that's just vanished uh, <laughs> in the distance. Uh, I just don't have, I mean, I've tried, i tried everything, I don't think I can really get, I mean, we had a couple of little wanders out towards the wall, um, and yeah, we just don't have an answer. If the Jag is starting to go a bit quicker, then there's just nothing more that I can realistically do realistically achieve with this car. The uh, the dirt was the one thing it looked like we might have had some strength over, but it is uh, not going to be enough. We have pulled clear of that GT40, although it's not completely gone away. It is still hanging around. Oh, and there's some understeering there as I carried way too much speed. Uh, <laughs> whoops. Yeah, it, GT40 is hanging around. I suspect that is quite the handful. The Ferrari is lovely and easy to drive. But uh, that GT40 did not look it in the plaza circuit. I doubt it would be here. Uh, it looks like the Shelby is up to fourth. We all cross the line. It's a second place for the Ferrari. Yeah, the Shelby crosses the line in fourth. And I think the Camaro may well have ended up in fifth. There's still a bad showing for the big Chevy that uh, <laughs> was, was very heavy uh, compared to the rest of us. The lightweight E-Type just couldn't quite cling on. The Emery's... Uh, struggled more than I expected. I think maybe they were a bit too light and got chucked about across the bumps in in all of that one. That's the best that's the best guess I have on uh, <laughs> on this one. Yeah, I like the the Ferrari's been a lovely car to drive. Can't can't really fault it. Well, we head to the Tierra Prospera circuit for our next race. A challenging fairly high speed tarmac track here. Uh I'm expecting my cars to be fairly strong once again. Uh, I think we're going to be on the in the battle for the podium positions. We shall, we shall see. I think the stability of my 250 is going to do me well around this track. But yeah, we will have to wait and see how it all pans out. Of course, a lot of things can indeed uh, go on here. As uh, so we shall try our best. There's an E-type had a good start. They get a bunch of understeer. Uh, we are really going through the gears. We're up into fourth already, and that is a couple of cars having some understeer issues. I will say thank you very much for that. And we now find ourselves in second, although we might be about to lose out to the E-Type. Oh, that has come past. God damn it. Uh, we have got a, bit, a little bit more grip than the E-Type, I think. Possibly. The E-Type might have us beaten for power. 
Uh, can we duck underneath through here? Not quite. We had a good run on the exit, but it's not going to... No, we're not going to be able to match the E-type straight line speed, I don't think. So, this, this track is an interesting one, because you do need power. You do need some straight line speed, but too little grip, and you're going to get in trouble, because there's a lot of these medium and high speed corners, uh, which makes it a great challenge of a circuit. We're right on the bumper of the, uh, the E-type there. Can we, we our best bet, if we're going to find a way past, is going to be into this next corner here, I think, is going to be where we're going to be able to do it. Oh, we got the car stopped. Oh, we tried to make it as awkward as possible, it just was not enough. That e type just a little bit too fast, oh, uh, and then it has got itself back in front for the run down the hill. I mean, we could potentially have a go to the inside here as well would be the other spot if we ever find ourselves in the right position to have a look. Uh, we'll be careful, Camaro is not at all far behind in this one, the big gaggle of cars. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a case of where can we find a way past the E-Type. GT40 is maybe again just that little bit too fast, I mean, at some point the Jack's going to pass us, but uh, you know, that's <laughs> already not really going to think or worry about that, nothing I can do about it. Uh, we will just accept our fate in some ways and just focus on can I pass the E-Type. We're a little too far back this time around. But we are quick through turn one. See, that's where we can gain a lot of our ground on that car. But it's going to uh, park in the middle of the road. Fairly, fairly sensible. It discouraged me from having a big dive. Not that I was actually ever going to be close enough to have a big dive to the inside there. Um... But, yeah, it's kind of a, oh, we're on a wonky line. That's bad news for me. That's a terrible piece of driving. Uh, we have ended up all out of shape. Again, we close and close and close. The E-Type had a little lock-up. We might be able to do something here. No, not quite. No, oh, nearly. Nearly got the speed. We got there. We are, we've got alongside, and then we're just going to run out of power up the hill. Just going just gonna to run out. Uh, of, of power here, and now now the E-Type is feeling like it has to defend. Now this is good for me, this is what we actually want. The E-Type's run a little bit wide, although it's still carried enough momentum for all of that. Now this, this is helping the GT40. It's a wonderful battle over second place here, but it certainly is helping the GT40. Now we oh, could have made that a bit more awkward for the E-Type, just couldn't, but oh, wasn't brave enough. Oh, the E-Type's pinged off the wall, out wide. Uh, we are going to look around the outside almost. Nope. <laughs> going for a couple. The E-Type is really struggling for grip there. I, I don't quite know how that ended up sliding as far wide as it did. In all of that, that's very peculiar. Uh, that's, yeah. It must have just, it was really, really struggling for the old, uh, oh, for the old traction. It may have missed a gear or uh, maybe gone down one too many and got it suddenly kicked sideways. Because uh, it was, it was kind of out of position it was turn one, I had the E-Type out of position, we kind of shuffled it wide at, uh, at the first corner because it was stuck with, with a Ferrari to its inside and couldn't take its normal line. And then it just never well, really recovered and I hit the wheel bit on there and it just pinged me off. Oh, that's a really, dis really big disappointment from a really good race. I mean, we were going to be cutting that super fine on the checkpoint anyway, uh, which I didn't really need to do at that point. But there we go. Well, <laughs> it's the end of that one. That is the end of that one. Shame Ferrari was good here again. Not, I think, close with the GT40. Though our fight with the Jag really did uh, stop us from ever really getting all that close to the Ford. But it was a lot of fun. But yeah. <laughs> Oh well, it is how it goes sometimes, you got a little bit too greedy, just misjudged it by a smidge, and that was uh, that. Was that. I don't think we're going to be able to catch those two ahead quite in time for the end of this one, uh, but there we go, yeah. Uh, annoyed at that one, I'm very annoyed at that one. Can't, can't do much about it now. Just, yeah. 
I think part, partly I got so used to following cars ahead, you just judge everything off them, and then the second I've got clear, I, you make silly mistakes because your reference points are slightly different. And we will be as brave as we can there, but it's not going to matter. It's not going to make any difference. It's a terribly disappointing run to a very good race. We are off to the Baja circuit for our next race, a fully dirt track to test out these classic cars. Uh, God knows what we're going to see on this one. I'm expecting the Ferrari to be pretty solid here. Uh, if it continues with the whole uh, stability aspect, seems to be its, its greatest its greatest strength. Um, yeah, it proved quick at the previous dirt circuit, so I would expect it to be fairly fast here. Uh, we will see what we can really do with, uh, with this one. We will fire the Ferrari up and head through the first corner. I'll be a little bit wary at the start. Oh, someone's already had a spin. Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's going to be easy to do with these. It's going to be very easy to do with uh, with these cars. It looks like we have got the E-Type leading the way for the moment. Uh, now, oh, the Cobra's having trouble getting turned. There's going to be a fair bit of steering with the rear, I suspect, through that section. But uh, we are all nicely nicely through there. Oh, we're going to get some air time over that little crest. The Cobra is really struggling for traction, which we are just not. Uh, I mean, I actually wanted to run up against the wall, but uh, we've got <laughs> we've got the grip to change lane midway round that corner, uh, which is not actually what I wanted to do, but the uh, Daytona was just wandering higher and higher. Oh, Camaro got in trouble with the wall. Not surprised to see something out there in trouble, to be fair. Uh, it was difficult to judge where the wall was with the sea of cars and dust being kicked up there. All uh, right, GT40 leads, E-Type second. To Emery's a third and fourth, with Ferrari hunting them all down. Uh, we are pretty good across the bumps, actually, for a classic race car. That deals with the bumps very, very well. That's one of the Emery's out of the way. That found a wall. We will sneak our way past. Uh, oh, we had a bit of a bad landing. We, we were making ground on that E-type, but uh, yeah, big, <laughs> big bounce on the landing. Not so good. I will take the E-type's position away there. Thank you very much. For, for that one, we move up into third now. Can we go chase down that uh, that GT40? Can we get past the other Emery? Well, that slides big time. We are going to... Uh, wall's going to go up against the wall. Don't need to. We've got just way, way more speed. I think the GT40's had a crash. It has had an absolute monster on the bridge. Uh, it got it wrong on the exit of the banked corner. Hit the inside of the bridge and went for a fly. So, <laughs> so, there we go. We have inherited the lead of the race in the Ferrari. I mean, it becomes a question of can the Jag uh, catch us in the remainder of this one? Will I find a way to screw it up? Possibly in this. The XJ13, it seemed like it struggled and then all of a sudden switched on. Uh, in the final lap of that previous dirt race. So whether it's going to do a similar thing here. I mean, this is a different prospect being full dirt and everything. Um, but yeah, we will have to wait and see. Come on, Ferrari. There we go. It's going to move around a fair bit. But uh, yeah, we are just that bit better balanced than almost everything else that uh, we are racing going to keep the sliding to a minimum here. It's this corner where we can just turn in and the car goes and no one else's car is turning in with a possible exception of the XJ13 that I haven't seen. That is about the only one that's keeping up with us. Just yeah, the turn in bite from this is astonishing in the dirt, which is what we want to see. Um, I don't quite know why it's so good in this car. I guess one of the plus points of having the engine at the front here is we have got weight over the front wheels. Not so good for the traction launching it out of the corners, but it is good, I guess, for getting the front wheels to turn in. So I guess there's... You know, it's normally the traction that's the bigger thing, but we're not actually struggling for traction all too much, which is weird having 600 horsepower on dirt, but yeah, the fact that we're not struggling for traction may be having the weight over the front is actually helping us in some of this. So yeah, there is that. Uh, right, come on Ferrari. You've got one more lap. We know the Jag is probably a little quicker than us, but the question is, can we keep the gap big enough 
that the Jag can't do anything around here. I don't know. We'll give it a damn good try. We slide a bit through here, but not too much. We are going to actually jump the narrow, the thin part of the water. That is what we wanted. Carry as much momentum as we can through the banked corner. Don't do what the GT40 did and uh, kind of get it twitching on the exit and end up on the bridge uh, supports there. Uh, we barrel our way there. Jag can't live with us even through that banked quarter. Just the gap we pull through that quarter alone might be enough to just save us. We struggle with traction out of the final turn. The Jag may have got a little closer, but I think that turn in on that banked corner is absolutely insane. I don't, <laughs> I don't quite know how I've done it, but that thing is an absolute monster. A, a, a couple of very specific corners. The Ferrari is pretty much unstoppable. It isn't the quickest car. I mean, lap time will be curious to see. Yeah, I mean, we, it's close. The GT40 could go quickly. It got down to a 9.6, but I just don't think it could do it consistently. Um, and we saw it found a bridge and had an accident. Uh, yeah, we have one strength in the Ferrari, and that is the turning on the dirt is unbelievable. Um, at some of those, it's not so great on the old traction zones and whatnot, but uh, it's good enough. 250 GTO will claim a victory in this one. Yeah, that thing is savagely, savagely fast. Oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. We finally get the Ferrari on the top step. We head on to our final race. It is at the festival circuit. We have a nice spot on the grid. Well, that might help us a bit. Uh, <laughs> this is a fast track. So this requires a lot of top speed around here. Um... I say I say a lot of top speed. It's probably the fastest track that we will have on the on the base game, so to speak. Outside you know, point to point, actual circuit races. I mean, I'm going to be curious to see how we do here. Uh, I think we do have some good top ends, relatively speaking. I think it's about every car here is running aero because, I mean, they're so out of control, kind of needed. Looks like the Emery isn't. Uh, we're not, I'd say not out of control, but uh, yeah, a lot of cars are running aero, so we're all kind of in a similar boat. The Emery not having it might make that thing very fast in the straights if if it can be controlled. I mean, it's all very well and good having absolutely insane levels of power, but if you have absolutely no control, it's not going to quite work for you because there is still some technical corners. We will draw alongside the Camaro, but we're not going to be able to get a move completed here. Uh, the E-Type I am a little bit worried about. I think that thing... Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that breaks... Probably should have expected it to break quite early, but then I broke, and then we got bumped by the Emery as well. It was all kind of just the concertina piano effect going on through there, or accordion effect, sorry. Uh, we are to the inside of the Camaro. I can get the power down mid corner, complete the pass briefly, and then back comes the Camaro. That'll come shooting past again. Uh, now, my hope is it's going to really struggle with speed on the exit of this final corner. We are going to. Carry the speed as much as we can towards turn one. We can be later on the brakes. We can get it stopped and we can park it on the apex. I can see the nose of a Camaro having a look every which way. We are not going to make it easy for the big Chevy to find a way back past again. Uh, we will send it the long way heading on to the bridge here. Uh, and we can probably defend this inside. I mean, you saw the grip we had compared to the Camaro last time around off the bridge. We're on a very tight line. Uh, oh, and the Camaro's got passed by both both of the Jags in one corner. Now, I don't think I can do a damn thing about the XJ13 here. I don't know whether I can do much about the E-Type either. Uh, we know it's got some good straight line speed. It's going to just about get an overlap there. But it is going to struggle on that line. That's a really tight line that's going to make it really awkward on the exit of the corner. So we will hold on for now, and it's not going to bother with a pass through here. It's just not worth it, and I've got more grip. I will be able to carry more speed through there than the E-Type, and the E-Type's back fighting the XJ13, the Emery, and the Camaro all through. There's a manic battle going on behind right there. Uh... <laughs> It's an absolutely crazy battle, and that might work in my favour. We are currently not four wide, and that is good news. Uh, they're not four wide anymore. They've sorted themselves out, but they are side by side. Uh, we are just going to go take a normal line onto the bridge and get off the bridge nicely, hopefully, and that's fine. Unfortunately, the XJ13 is now clear, and that's going to, I suspect, come soaring past. I 
guess we can get. Maybe get the turn in there. Might be the one place we will have a little bit more grip. But we just don't quite have enough speed, I don't think, to fend off. I mean, I could also just try and make sure I don't make any mistakes. It's going to be the easiest way for the Jags to find a way past is if I make a silly error somewhere, then life will be considerably easier for them. We are nice through that final corner. The XJ13 is very nice through that final corner. I don't know if I can defend from it for two laps. That is going to be a really big ask. And it's already get the nose alongside. Now it's going to be the wrong side through here, but it's not going to matter because I suspect it's going to have enough speed that it's just going to be able to do that pass. My only hope is that we can just fire it underneath on the bridge and make it awkward. It's the one move I've got. <laughs> it, that is as aggressive as I can, and we're going to try a very similar trick up here. Oh, it blocks. Clever move from Eccentric. Knew exactly the game that I was about to go and play. Uh, I was going to duck underneath, but the Jag blocked it. However, in parking on the apex, what it's done is it's made itself slow on the exit. So we fight back past, but this is clinging on for dear life. And I fear the clinging on is about to run out uh, as we cannot hold an overlap into the final corner. The Jag is a little bit wide, but I can't, I can't profit from it. Nah, it really was. It was last ditch attempts all around there. Well, I say last ditch. It was I had to make the passes stick. It was the only chance I had because it's just that bit too quick for me here. I feel like we, this is probably the track where we have been the most competitive in relation to that, and that's saying something because I've been just far too quick. Um, there's been a couple of places where we've had a chance, and it's all on the turning. That's where we gain it, and I tried there. Like, that line is not the quickest line through the corner, what I was doing, but I could surprise a car because the front end of mine would stick and others won't. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> we could make it wide, we could make the Ferrari very difficult to pass, but ultimately it is just not quite quick enough around this, around this circuit. Uh, we have got just a couple more corners to go. I have very much liked this car, funnily enough. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it has been a wonderful car. Um, it has been a, an absolute joy to drive as well. We will head through oy, that final checkpoint. Ah, I got that bit wrong. Doesn't really matter. Not much we were going to be able to do anyway in that one. Ferrari will get a podium. It'll sit in second uh, at the end of all that. It was a manic battle towards the front uh, in that one. GT40 struggled around there. I guess it just didn't quite have the control, although it was in the massive fight back there. The E-Type, uh, the lightweight E-Type will be third. Camaro gets fourth place ahead of that GT40. The Emery slips to sixth ahead of the Cobra. Ugh. A manic race. But it was a good fun race. I just don't have an answer for the XJ13. It's just too quick. Um, we tried. We fought as valiantly as we could, pretty much. But I do very much like the Ferrari. That is a lovely car to, uh, to go driving with. Well, there we go. That is going to be it for for this one. If you wish to sign up and take part in the next uh, series, the next next recording, etc., um, then uh, you can sign up via our Discord. There'll be a link in the in the description. Find the versus community sign up section, and you can register to take part in there. That though shall be it from me and a glorious Ferrari. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time. Uh, yeah, goodbye.